Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. You might want to put your mouse over the pause button in case you need it for parts of this video. I'll show a little bit of what's going on here. You notice this chart in the middle, three quarters of the way is basically where I was taking these readings. At five miles per hour, 3.95, almost four watts, that's point, a little over a quarter of an amp. Also going to look here at seven miles an hour. And we're looking at 10.85 watts at 0 0.786 amps. Still not much. 8 miles an hour. Wow, we got over an amp now. 16.2 watts. Also, if you look at the chart for a second, the third and the fifth line from the bottom are what we're concerned with here. 9 miles per hour, 23 watts at 1.7 amps. Remember, we have 18 gauge wire in the stator. But we have it in delta, so it's able to do twice the amps. Uh, 10 miles an hour, 31.65 watts at 2.29 amps, and getting better. Looking at 12 miles per hour with 4 amps, well within the limitation. 18 gauge wire is rated about 16 amps for chassis wiring. And at 15 miles per hour we have 106.8 watts at 7.73 amps. 18 miles an hour we're gonna have 184 watts that's 13.38 amps it's pretty close to where we want and at 21 miles per hour we have 293.2 watts at 21.24 amps and at 25 miles per hour that's 495.7 watts 36 amps 18 amps per leg hmm it better be wired in delta because we just went over by four amps and at 30 miles per hour that's 855 watts that's 62 amps that's way above this thing should be furled out by now and now industry's favorite 36 miles per hour with my four and three quarter foot prop 1.477 by gosh watts 107 amps Chances are you'll only see these winds about three or four times a year and hardly ever past 15 minutes long. 50 miles an hour just for giggles. But let's look at this 100 miles per hour. Oh my goodness. 31,658 watts. Mm-hmm. 2,294 amps, right? Yeah. I don't think we uh, should have, I think it should have a furling mechanism on it. I think it should knock out right around 20, 22 miles per hour start to furl and try to furl out all the way by around 28 miles per hour. And we'll show you a little bit more on that. Look at these gauges. If you'd like to study this chart, it may be found here. Notice 16 amps on 18 gauge and 14 gauge showing 32 amps. 5.9 by transmission, but if you multiply that times 3, uh, we're looking at about 18 amps total. 16 gauge shows 22 amps. 12 gauge showing 41 amps. Now taking things a little bit farther, let's look at something very important. 14 gauge wire says 32 amps. A 9 gauge wire says 64 amps. So two 14 gauge wires are the equivalent of one 9 gauge wire. But as lead wire, the wire coming down the pole to your batteries, uh, we're looking at 19 amps. The good news is we're working with three phase power. That means we'll have three wires coming down the pole. Three wires times 19 amps is 57 amps. But that's okay because we're going to be furled out long before we reach that. The only other problem is that 9 gauge wire of that length can get pretty costly. That's no problem. Two 14 gauge extension cords will do just fine. And now for my analogy. The figures in this video were computer generated for ideal values for various wind speeds with 4.75 foot 2 bladed prop. 4 foot 9 inch diameter or metric 1.4478 meters. Well, even though the real test for the Muddy's Mighty Mini Wind Turbine reached charging voltage a bit late, the test results for the 12 mile an hour wind were very close to the optimum value shown by the computer generated results at 4 amp. But I was very pleased to see the efficiency match at that wind speed. Well, here's your readings 12 miles per hour, 54.7 watts, and about 4 amps. But the stator was wired for delta for these tests. In star, the charging voltage was reached way too early. 
In fact, charging voltage was reached before the props cut in RPMs were reached. This means that the alternator was producing amps way too early and slowed the blades down, thus no matter what the wind speeds, the blades never had a chance to get lift and lift is responsible for most of the blades power. Also, 18 gauge wire is rated for 16 amps max. In star, the max output would be 13.8 volts times 16 amps for a total output of 220 watts. But in delta, the max power would be 441.6 watts. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Now, that ain't good enough for me, and I ain't having it because that's yucky. It's got to put out 500 watts plus in good winds to be called a mighty mini anything. And I don't want a muddy mighty mini wind fire in the sky as it burns up. Some may call that just being picky. Bam! But I just call it <laughs> a muddy thing. So let's get to the solution. The solution is to wind a new stator. While 18 gauge shows an amp rating of 16 amps 14 gauge shows an amp rating of 32 amps and in delta that means 64 amps. 64 amps times 13.8 volts AC shows the capability of 883.2 watts maximum. I bought a 3 watt amplifier once. I used it once or twice a week for about two months. It's pretty nice. You guessed it, I blew it up. When I opened it up, I saw an overdriven 8-pin op-amp chip rated for much less wattage and one more transistor. I threw that away. So why should I overdrive the stator to a max output when I want this to last for your grandchildren to inherit? What I want this unit to achieve is 500 to 550 watts and still working many years later. This will be the job of the furling mechanism. Some folks think that when a unit furls out, it stops making good power. In reality, it will be producing nice amperage while running in the furled position. Remember, when the wind speed doubles, the power factor goes up eight times. It will be producing good power even though it is showing safe overspeed protection for your investment and dependability. And last of all, the 18 gauge stator had 300 turns per coil. 14 gauge wire is a bit fatter than the 18 gauge. This means it will be able to fit less windings in the allotted space given for the original coils. But we had too many windings on the original stator anyway. Judging by the test results in the delta configuration, 150 turns in star might not be enough. Even using two strands of 18 gauge wire for an equivalent amp rating and some extra windings due to the space saved, the coils might still be short the proper amount of turns. Solution More magnet. One inch square by half inch thick magnets are needed to replace the one inch by half inch by half inch magnets. But from what I've seen it does not double the magnets power. Instead, I figure the increase is closer to 75% more. The good news is Revision 2 has larger diameter magnet rotors. This allows for more turns in the stator's coils. But before I spend more money on magnets, I will try the new stator first. Okay, we're down to 1 minute and 15 seconds for the one last option or solution. Carve a larger diameter prop. The larger diameter prop will spin slower. The slower prop will reach cut-in speed before the charge in voltage. Thus, it will not stall out. And, it will also start up easier in a lower wind velocity. It will also collect more power from the wind. This will also mean that I would have to make the unit furl out much earlier to prevent overdriving the stator. The downside is I'm still using the 18 gauge stator and limited to 441 watts, but the upside would be more constant power in those lower winds. Enough said. I am interested in constructive comments about the wind turbine. Please rate and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and listening. It's been my pleasure to share this information exchange. Many good things to you and yours. God bless you all. This has been a Muddy Presentation and a Green Wind and Other Home Energies Production. Copyright 2013.